So thank you for these two very exciting days. And I must say that when we yesterday sat with um, Krzysztof to try to uh, summarize the first day and to get an idea how we should um, uh, moderate this last panel, we couldn't stop to discuss because you opened so many so fascinating topics. So thank you for that and I hope that we will now qu quarrel a little bit between us and that we will discuss vividly different concepts. So Krzysztof, could you please open the... I will try to. So um, thank you, Karolina, uh, for inviting me here. It's really fantastic to, to have been listening to all, your, to all your presentations. I think they, they come together as, a, as an incredibly interesting and um, proposition that we can kind of try to, to put together. Oh, this is my role here, to kind of sum up what has been said and maybe try to focus on, on a couple of points. So um, one thing I, really, I, I would really um, like to start with is something that Tamara actually said. So thank you for, for, for taking this up. As you, you asked this question, um, would be the strength of a photography museum today? And one of the things I was thinking about very often uh, when I was listening to the, uh, to the various talks um, is, um, is, is a work by Lewis Lawler, um, Why Pictures Now? And thinking about like, why a photography museum now? Uh, not that, that, that I don't believe that, that it should be there, yes? But uh, it, is, it is not entirely clear to me how such a museum could look like today. Um, what was so interesting in, 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 in the last two days was that all of, your, of, all of the institutions you all work with or in um, have very different backgrounds and very different genealogies. And on the one hand, they give you a very specific uh, character. On the, on the other hand, I can see that they, they can be also experienced as a certain burden. Um, the longer the history, uh, the, the more things you end up dealing with, yes? Um, and so, uh, um, this question of hoarding, I found, I found uh, um, um, very, very interesting. So, the question I would like to ask all of you um, is, if you were actually free to really build a photography museum from ground up, right now, how would you envisage it? And how much it would differ from the museums you are actually, you're, you're actually, uh, um, you're, you're actually working in and, 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 and creating right now, okay? It, it seems like a very general question, but I, I would like to frame it in, in, in two or three ways before I, I, I pass on the microphone, if you, if you don't mind. Um, so, one of the things that I found really uh, also compelling in, in this th discussions is, is that we have two, two kinds of, of, uh, of institutions here. One are, are art museums where photography departments were, um, uh, were opened at some point. So, uh, and this has to do with this whole history of photography uh, in relationship to the, to the arts. And in a way, uh, it seems that the story is over. I mean, we don't have to discuss it over and over again. At the same time, um, there are still problems. I mean, th there are still open answers how, how to do that. And I think Kentem um, um, uh, um, Bajak's uh, presentation was, was about this, yes? On the one hand, the opening of a, of a department of photography as a very early instance of uh, acknowledging photography as a, as, a significant, as a significant medium, as a significant way to produce images. And, and now, this moment, uh, looking back, uh, whether we still need this, and if we need this, in, in what way. On the other hand, we have historical museums uh, or institutions that, that, that collect, um, uh, for example, archives, yes? Uh, which tend to be much more uh, cumulative. And, and then, um, um, how to deal with that? Especially in the, in the historical museum, you tend to uh, tr um, treat images um, uh, transparently, yes, as, as documents, not so much interested in the, uh, in the image itself. And, 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 and in some way, we are kind of still on this, um, sometimes it, it, it's very hard, I, I mean, it, it still seems to be very different worlds, yes? On the one hand, the institutions that uh, put the stress on the image itself, and the institutions that use the image as a, as a document to tell a certain story about reality. And one institution is, seems to be a machine that always ends up producing art, whatever you, you, you show in the, in the frame of, of it. And in the other hand, um, it, 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 it always produces um, objects of culture, not merely, or, or, or not merely, yes? So the, this would be... Um, mm, 
this would be maybe a way of framing it. And, and to, to, to sum it all up, I don't know if you are very, very familiar with this, there was this um, initiative opened a couple of years ago at the, media, at the National Media Museum in, 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 in the UK by Charlotte Cotton that was called Either And. And she invited a group of, of young scholars and, and, and curators, a PH collective led by Ben Burbridge, and they opened um, a website. And, 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 and they tried to think of both sides of that spectrum at the same time and try to think what, how can we think about photography today and how can we, can we use photography uh, or um, how can we understand the place photography has in, 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 in today's world. And they decided to, um, um, to divide their thinking into several thematic categories. I'm just going to read them just to kind of give you some kind of points of reference. Uh, I found it quite interesting how they did this. So. This whole project, either end, was divided into the following themes or topics, where they invited various various um, authors to, to 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 write under these headings. So it's archiving on the line, exhibitionism, reconsidering amateur photography, uh, protest politics community, uh, humanism, um, the social media. So this is also the this topic of Facebook and Flickr and what have you. Yes and uh, use, reuse, so various ways of approaching um, uh, gestures of recontextualizing images. So, who would like to, to say it? Do you still remember the question? <laughs> no, no, it's, it's not obligatory, but uh, whoever feels... Uh, who would like to start? <laughs> Uh, well, I, I, I think I, I, for myself, I would reframe this question because it's not just the question of photography museum, it's the question of the museum itself. Because for some time being, these questions have been raised and I have participated in some of those debates and it's obvious that uh, discussing museum photography without considering this broader question, uh, it's problematic. So that, that's one point. Uh, second point would be uh, this uh, gathering and conference makes me think of a book by Jean Claire, published about 25 years ago, uh, Duchamp uh, uh, and Photography. And, and uh, the point he made that uh, Deschamps uh, took photography as a, a challenge to, to art and uh, uh, to art institutions as well. So if I would have a possibility to establish the uh, Museum of Photography, it would not be just Museum of Photography. Uh, I would take it as an opportunity uh, to do not just institutional history of museums, but also institutional critique of the museum. And I think photography and the whole history of photography gives you an excellent uh, departure point for that. Well, uh, I would, uh, for example, uh, combine uh, historical documents and then I would invite artists, contemporary artists and photographers, um, maybe to give them commissions. Also, I would uh, organize uh, specific uh, platforms, uh, discussions, conferences, workshops. I would organize also research, publication series and so on. Microphone. Yes. <laughs> and um, and trying to, to answer your question, if there was a question, uh, it's uh, I think it really doesn't make sense to open a museum of photography today. And um, if I had the choice, I will, I will not. And uh, I think this is our great chance because uh, we have to reinvent ourselves and to reconstruct ourselves 
in this uh, problematic. Why it doesn't make sense? Uh, because the artists themselves doesn't want anymore to be seen as photographers. You have, if we want to be very caricatural, we can say that uh, contemporary art artists uh, want to make films, <laughs> and they go to, to make their long feature. And a uh, photographer wants to, to be seen as artists, and uh, they prefer much more to exhibit in a gener general art museum than in a photography uh, museum. So it's, it's a fantastic challenge for us. It means that we have to, uh, to change our offer. We cannot just do uh, one more retrospective of a mid-career artist. We have to rethink the, the medium and our, our place in this uh, uh, world. But this, we, we know it since a few years or, or some time. Uh, what I was very interested to learn today is that uh, the opposite model is also under reconstruction. I was uh, thinking that the General Museum was a good place for photography and that to be a photography department in a General Museum, it was the place to, to be. And uh, from what I have heard today, uh, there is the same uh, reconstruction and, and renovation, so it means that we are really living in a great time for uh, photography in two institutions. Thank you, Sam. I think I disagree with you, Sam. I think we still need, <laughs> need, need Museum of Photography. I think, uh, of course, I was, I was talking from MoMA's point of view, and I think that uh, we're all, I think one point we will all agree on around that, uh, I would certainly say around that table, but on that stage, is that we're not anymore pretending to write the history of photography. We're all writing an history of photography. Uh, and we're all trying to do it from a point of view and from a collection. And the way that uh, you are writing the history of photography is uh, from your collection, uh, which is, of course, uh, different from uh, my point of view and from, from MoMA's collection. But I think we need both. I really think we need both. Uh, I'm perfectly comfortable with my position at MoMA and with stating that we are writing a history of photography and not the history of photography, I, as Beaumont Newell could say in the, in the 40s, um, 30s or 40s, that we're writing a history of photography and that we're writing, and I here agree totally with, uh, with uh, François Cheval, for once, uh, <laughs> that we're writing a history of photography as an art form. So, we are, it's, and I really want uh, to stick to that with MoMA is not here, to write a history of photography uh, as a cultural phenomenon or as an anthropological fact, which is also uh, what photography is about. But uh, MoMA is here to write, or to try to write, the most comprehensive, complex, interesting, and interdisciplinary um, history uh, of, uh, of art, including photography. So this is, this is my point of view, but I think, I think uh, we're all uh, writing different histories and that we need all these histories. And I don't have any problems, you know, with history, with the uh, museums of photography today. I think some museums of photography are writing very, very interesting uh, different history. And even I have sometimes problems with histories, with museums of photography that, and I'm referring to, to, uh, to, to Tamara, and I'm turning to Tamara, that sometimes try to um, kind of forget or put aside the technical side of the, of the, of, 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 of the, of the medium. I think uh, Ulrich, unfortunately, is not, is not here anymore, but uh, they have a, uh, at the Stadt, uh, Photostadt Museum in, in, in Munich a great collection of, uh, of cameras that they don't show anymore. Uh, you have a great collection of, of cameras that you show, but that, that you maybe tend to show less than before. And I, okay, so you, we want to show more, so that's fine. So I think it is, it is a part of, of, of photography that we, uh, art museum, don't show, but that is equally interesting. So the, we, we should all, uh, I would say, make the most of the collections we have to try to build the richer narratives. May I say something? Um, it just, um, 
you, you speak, when you speak about art museum content, you just speak about your photographic department. And the chance we have in an art museum is that there is photography in other departments, like library, like architecture department, uh, like peinture and sculpture department. So we don't have to treat all kind of photography because other departments have photography too and look at photography in other way than a photographic department has to do. So in fact, yes, it's true. We, we have to, we, we, in photographic department, we speak about art photography, but it's not just because there is other photographic uh, institution. It's also because inside the museum, there is other uh, department who has photography and we can speak about photography in another way uh, than us. And to answer to your question, what kind of museum photograph photo museum built today? I was a little bit surprised that nobody speak about other institution. If they, even if there is no photo institution in a country or in a city, there is some place we have collection of photography like like libraries, like, and so you never start from nothing. Uh, you, you have when you build a collection, you have to think of what wants to say your collection, but what the other institution in your country says uh, to not say exactly the same and to have a different point of view. Uh, you are not alone. It's not just your institution and you do what you want in your, in your institution and the other institutions are not important. You have to, uh, to work with them, to speak with them, to not do the same. Uh, and so, so it's very important to, to, to know what they are speaking about and what they propose to you. Uh, sorry, but but uh, I, I would like to refer to what uh, Quentin said. Uh, what uh, if within an art museum we define photography in this context? Um, what does it mean if MoMA uh, buys uh, uh, images from the concent Cambodia concentration camps? What does it mean to, to or shows? What what does it mean for an art museum? And the opposite. What does it mean when uh, a photo museum among uh, uh, its highlights uh, shows man rays? I mean, we, we, so it's the question about identity of, of these uh, places. Uh, I think that we all observe that we cannot be very faithful. With, with photography, we cannot be very faith, faithful to the uh, like basic, or a very pure concept that it's very easy to, to transgress and that the border is not sharp. So I, I would like to, to ask about this. Um, yeah, what 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 does it mean to 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 change sides? I don't want to be the the only one to to talk, but it seems that uh, you addressed that question to me, so I will try to answer. Um, and I would. Put that that, um, that reference to um, images of concentration camp uh, in a larger context of, in fact, what is vernacular photography, the place of vernacular photography, uh, photo reportage, uh, snapshot photography uh, in the museum. I said that John Sarkovsky was probably uh, one of the first curators to take that all these aspects of vernacular photography, but especially snapshot photography but also photo reportage and, and some other aspects, uh, to take them into account in uh, building or writing his own history of photography. And, um, but the way he did it, I have problems with the way he did it, because he did it on formalist terms. You know, He did it on formalist terms, saying, of course, what was interesting is that he was probably the first one to state that uh, uh, Julia, Cameron, uh, Julia Margaret Cameron print was uh, as interesting as a snapshot American photography of the 40s, that both images could be um, analyzed and viewed uh, in formal terms, but he sticked to formal terms. That is, he usually uh, was uh, putting aside the content, uh, the content of the image. And I think that we, uh, fine art institution, uh, still have a problem with vernacular photography that is not absolutely solved. This is why, for me, I think, 
in the future, it would be better not to try to avoid uh, having new material of vernacular photography entering the collection, because I think that this dialogue between what I would call art photography and vernacular photography is interesting, but maybe it would be more interesting to have that material entering when already appropriated by artists. So this, this, is, this, this, is really, this, is, this is really what I think uh, we should do in the future, uh, because that would be uh, the way of having statement, uh, views, because I'm always a bit uncomfortable about uh, that uh, curator aesthetic glance on a rough material which is not already appropriated and turned into an artistic form and put into the museum. I'm not sure I have answered your question, but uh, I have tried to answer. Said that uh, we think that a museum of photography makes uh, sense. And I tend to agree with the, the fact that uh, how a museum of photography should uh, be is a question that regards uh, the way that uh, the museums should be in a society that is changing. I already told my point of view on the new technologies. But there is a second uh, uh, direction that I think that the museums should take into account, which is uh, a way to get involved people in culture. And this should be part of the museums, not only as a program of events, but also real experiences of co-creation, where artists and citizens representing different aspects of this culture that is changing and it is globalizing is represented in the museums. And the photography uh, is an aspect of uh, the museums, is, is a kind of museums where this co-creation experiences can be uh, leading, uh, leading examples for other museums. Also on this, uh, there is a new project uh, financed by the European Commission that uh, will start uh, next uh, year, uh, and so we have uh, other reasons uh, to stay in contact. Uh, how the museums uh, uh, should uh, transform themselves uh, through an experience of a co-creation. Um, yes, I wanted to comment on that. Thank you very much for that, uh, for that voice, because I, you, you, your answers um, were, came, came from, from a situation that you are interested exclusively in photography as art. And, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm interested in photo, for, for, for moments, we should focus on that form. I'm interested yeah. in all forms of photography, yes. and uh, it's always difficult for a curator to exclude all other forms of photography he's interested in, but I definitely think we must for MoMA. Hmm. Yes, yes, and I, 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 I have no... no just to, yeah. to make things... Yes, <laughs> of course, and I have no issues with that, and I, I think that this idea of, of kind of, you know, having a vernacular photography in such a collection only through artistic intervention or appropriation is a very, is, uh, is a very good call, because you, you avoid this kind of problems that, that Carolina raised, because that actually raised a lot of discussions. How come that the MoMA yes. bought those pictures just directly and then you have all these questions. Are we treating those people as artists, etc., etc.? But then, yeah, because, am I not, no, okay. But then, but then the, uh, the question of the, of the photographic museum at large is, is something, uh, I think it is a, 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 a little different in character because can we really bridge that gap between photography at large and, uh, and, and, and for photography as art. I understand that, that you said, uh, Sam, that, 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 that you're not interested in a museum of photography because photogra photographers don't want to, I mean, 
artists working with photography don't want to be called photographers anymore. But but which, which, is, which is in a way not absolutely true, I think. There are still uh, photographers uh, involved yeah, in their medium, are, uh, yes. I think, uh, working on photography and uh, trying to, uh, to question the medium of photography and calling themselves photographers. Even, even you know, Jeff Worley, he, he calls himself a photographer. Yes. Uh, Hila Becher calls herself a photographer. And then they're really, uh, and they're really attached to that, uh, to that denomination yes. and to that identity. Yes. Yes. yes, but at and the same time... Have you, have you seen uh, Jeff Wall in a photo museum uh, recently? Is that... Uh, <laughs> yeah. not. Uh, I, no, I just no, want just to be, to yeah. be clear on this mm. thing. So, uh, Carolina asked yesterday for fight, and uh, so perhaps <laughs> I started too, too fast. Uh, of course I believe in photography. Of course I believe in museum of photography. Mm. And, uh, but we are really in the, in the process of time yes, of right. redefinition of this uh, museum. And, and the yesterday museum of photography as a model, the one that was established in the 70s, 80s, 90s, doesn't function anymore. And uh, there is a kind of, of clear separation. If MoMA or other general institutions uh, are saying that today they are focusing on photography in their form of art, uh, we have to say, or some photography museum has to say, that they are interested in photography in its globality and uh, as a cultural object. And uh, yes, I'm taking the, the, the vernacular uh, approach of photography. I'm taking the applied uh, photography. And I don't want to limit this category of photography to the body of work appropriated by artists. Because uh, I think that especially during this period of time when artists believe that they are archivists, curators, uh, documentalists, it's important also to be able to conserve the main uh, source, the main, uh, the main provenance. So uh, this, this redefinition of uh, museums of photography and photo department is very interesting and I think we are, we are rethinking the 21st century museum of photography. Well, so maybe I will just move this discussion a bit to Polish context because I think it's very important for all of us uh, in this room to uh, to have this clear vision um, about the uh, future museums or museums that are established but not, not, not existent really. Um, uh, the situation here is very different than uh, in the US or in, uh, uh, in the, let's say, Western countries. So. Uh, 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 frankly speaking, I, I consider uh, this question that Krzysztof posted here not maybe that relevant to New York or you know to Los Angeles, but uh, to Warsaw or to oh, well, to Warsaw specifically very important. Um, uh, and I must say that I'm not sure whether this museum should be uh, founded, uh, especially as you said that it's like the classical museum that you are dreaming of, especially after this conference. I think it showed that uh, all of the let's say. Uh, top curators, directors, and people dealing with photography are some, somewhere else, you know, that it's like, um, um, that this model is ancient, yes, that it looks very, very different. And, um, um, and it's not by chance that we have here deputy director of Museum of National Art, and it's very nice, but there is no, nobody from the Museum of Modern Art that was established not so long ago in this, uh, uh, in this city. Oh, Quentin knows this place, and I hope uh, some of you also have been there uh, during this stay. Uh, and they, uh, it's like 10 years old, yes? Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw, maybe. Uh, and they, from the beginning, uh, decided not to have any of this kind of departments uh, in, within their structure, even though they are dealing with um, modernity and modern art. Uh, by its name. So it's very telling. The, uh, another institution from this city, which is the Center for Contemporary Art, decided to close, shut down their uh, photographic department uh, like three or four years ago. I don't remember exactly. The new director came and closed it simply. So it's like the, the answer is here, yes? They are closing down rather than, uh, than opening new ones. And uh, if we are thinking about uh, the outcome of this conference, uh, I think it's very, very important for all of us to uh, keep in mind this message uh, or this discussion that for many of you may be a bit formal or academic, but here is like uh, real, so to speak, yes? Um, uh, so that's like my commentary and uh, yeah, thank you for all these, uh, you know, papers and stuff. Oh, but uh, Adam, Adam, do you really? Uh, I... 
since you pointed to me, I, I, I take the liberty to take the mic. Uh, I think it's a very important debate at this point, uh, especially that the moment we are uh, in the National Museum is not a moment where we have fully decided on the shape or on the nature of the institution to come. And uh, the more important it is that we have the chance to host this, this, this debate here. And uh, I think there are different positions on what should be done in a space that will become probably available to us soon with the initial idea to have a museum of photography there. And I must partly disagree with what you say, Adam, but thank you very much for bringing this issue very much in the center. Uh, because when you look at the uh, Museum of Modern Art in Warsaw, it's 10 years old, but it has a collection of 300 pieces. And you cannot define or measure 500, 450. Uh, you are not counting in the uh, photographic collection of the archives of, for the example, archives, yeah. Kosakovsky, like right, thousands of in, thousands in, of in images, of course. In case, it's a very, very small institution with a long way to go. And so I wouldn't take that as a model which is really telling us where to go. I, I agree that it's very difficult to imagine a floor with uh, photographs from the 19th century which reflect local history and refer to the city, etc., with a show of Andreas Gorski upstairs. You know, that, that would probably create a, a very strange um, exhibition reality. And uh, uh, I think what we, we should be doing now is looking more also towards the audience, you know, what the audience really is expecting and want on the one hand. And secondly, like any museum said, see at our collections how they complement each other. It's, a, it's an encyclopedic museum, the National Museum in Warsaw, with very uneven types of different collections in different departments, etc., etc. Altogether, 830,000 items in this. That include things, very large collections, that deal with modern propaganda, and that's the Museum of Poster. Uh, that involve history and history of technology to a certain extent. And I'm not so sure whether what we will be looking at will not be also addressing the issues of the relations of these modern age, 20th century, second half of 19th century changes in the visual culture, which, uh, which is, I think, a field extremely important to the audience. They read that type of area much better today, very often, than the classical art museum with its narratives created by art historians, etc., etc. So I think we'll be very carefully looking at it and seeing how, on the one hand, we have the taxonomy of our collections and different parts that talk to each other, and on the other, will be really also asking the audience very clearly what, what they would like. So that's, that's, I want just to comment on that. Thank you, Piotr. And there's, there's maybe uh, one more step we can take further. So um, just, to answer, uh, just to answer very quickly to, to what you just said, um, uh, this question of, of, uh, um, of catering to the, to the um, to the wishes of the audience is a very, I think, is, it's a very tricky question. Because on the one hand, I mean, uh, we are kind of living in this, in this situation where, where institutions tend to think more and more like that, at the same time forgetting this, this idea of a museum, the original idea of actually educating the audience. I mean, trying to, to propose something. Yes, but uh, um, um, I think that this other um, is very important, especially in a, in a place where you have, you have a whole audience that is not very familiar with visual culture and, and art. I mean, not many people go to museums here. Um, and the other question is something that, that has cropped up um, uh, during all of, the, all of the presentations. Of course, all the museums are based on, on collections, and thus they're based on property. So, you know, again, you, Sam, you, uh, you brought up this question of not having something for yourself, yes? And, uh, and especially in, in, in a moment where one could envisage a new institution cropping up without, uh, without uh, a collection. Can we think of such an institution, of a museum of photography, um, without uh, or beyond property, yes? 
beyond this kind of th this necessity to build on a very capitalist in a, in, in a way idea of having something that is that is um, that is uh, your asset that that you then draw from yes and build on what would out what what would be the counterweight to that can i say um I think the property is not so interesting if it's if it's yours, but I or uh, I don't mind. But um, the physical objects, or in a digital world, the the dig digital objects, they require a certain standard of uh, keeping, and it's maybe a bit practical. But I think what makes a photo museum interesting and or still interesting is starting from this, this physical thing, where you, have, um, well, you have special depots, you have a special way of showing photography, which you cannot do, you cannot show p permanent photography. We had discussions about it, but three months is, is about right. Mm -hmm. And then you can prolong it to six months, or sometimes maybe 10 months, but it's already illegal, uh, according to the, to the conservationists. So, uh, photography is a... It was, at least, a medium, uh, a physical medium, with all kinds of different... Um, it, it was very related to, to drawing. So, you had to show it in a different way, you had to keep it in a different way, you had to... Cons your conservation was different. And I think you might say here, we don't need a photo museum, but the, the issue is, what we see here in, in Poland, is it's mixed, it's, over, it's everywhere, Nobody really has funds, so combining uh, forces might uh, not as much emancipate the idea of photography, but it might at least emancipate the material. It might give the material more power and some people more um, means to research, to develop standards. And so only for that reason, I think it might be interesting to start an archive, at least. And then, <coughs> if you have this archive, why not um, build something on top of it which shows the material which is in the archive? And then you're almost a museum. Uh, uh, it seems to me interesting that you mentioned that the museum uh, as a collection is based on a capitalist principle, because museum origins of the museum is basically an enlightenment project which was based on public sphere. So yes. this is saying... Is it the same now? S this yes. Is, this is the question. Is yes, the and now what we have seen in the last 20 years was a huge shift uh, to involve... You might remember many discussions, for example, about New York institutions when the dividing line between the private and the public became more and more blurred. So, so this is one big elephant in the room because obviously this is a very important question, uh, but it's not for the museums to solve it because it's really, we are talking about poly current dominant political and economic model. So that's why I mentioned that uh, the debate about fundamental questions about museums in this framework are very important. We should not forget them. Absolutely, yes. We were talking um, earlier uh, also about this, yes, and this is also something I understood uh, François Cheval to be aiming at in, in, in his lecture about, uh, well, what, what do we do to make uh, an institution serious? And in a way, this is also that, that you mentioned, Tamara, yes? That um, you use this kind of phrase of supplementing the collection, yes? That if you want to have a serious collection to be a player in this kind of world of, uh, of people who are showing photographs, who, who participate in this, in, this, in, this, in, this, um, in this world, yes? Of, um, uh, of discourse, of, uh, of photography, you need a serious collection. And to need a serious collection, it has to be basically the same everywhere. You, you need your Louis Baltz, you need your Stephen Shore, you need your Baldus, uh, you, you, you need you need all the all the classic. Uh, you need those masterpieces to be able to start with something, and and uh, so uh, this is what, what I was thinking about in terms of property. Because if you come to this without history, in a sense, yes, um, uh, uh, as as other museums had, uh, how do you do that? How do you uh, approach that? Can you be serious without having those assets? And those assets are very. Um, 
um, you can translate them into market value, yes? And the simple thing is that you can't afford them if you, if you are in such a place um, as here, yes? And how do you, how do you deal with that? Um, you're right what you're saying about trying to be a serious museum, but this is also something that has grown. I think I was talking about the past, about that everybody was collecting the same. I think nowadays, if you start a new museum, it's not possible anymore to start collecting all these 19th century and modernist photographers. I, I don't think you need to do it because so many other museums or collections already have done that before you. I think for the Polish example here, I think there's, when, when I talk to, to Carolina or to other people, there is this need, I think for an archive, like, like Martin also said, you have these collections, they're everywhere, but this is your starting point, the need of uh, preserving them, uh, showing them, doing research on them. And we're not talking here about an art photography museum. I don't think, I, I, the art museums that have a photography department, of course they're um, focused on art photography, but a photography museum is so much more than that. It's also what uh, Sam said before, photograph art photography is only, I don't know how many percentage of the photography that is around the world. And most photographers that I know, they, want, they don't want to be called artists. No, they're photographers. And a, photograph a photograph can be interesting or um, without being called art. So, yes, but then the question would be because uh, art photography is only a very small part of the whole photographic production and yeah. all other part of the production, these are different users. So it's always photography linked to different disciplines. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I think in a photography museum, all these different disciplines can come together. Okay, so do we have competences for this? Uh, to what do you mean? When you have in one place uh, photography related to uh, fashion, uh, s physics, biology, architecture, um, okay, but you know, we can we can enumerate. Of course, but but of you have to so make a selection. Even if photography museum, it can't encounter everything. You still have to make a selection. Okay, maybe we will focus here in Poland. Uh, there are a lot of photographers working with fashion, or it's more like this topic. Or so you have to make a selection because you it's not possible to do everything. And maybe that's why we need more photography museums in Poland than only one, because then you can. Then each museum can have its, I don't know, can maybe specialize or focus more on this or that or this region or there are so many variations on how you can develop a museum. Il n'y a aucun intérêt. Could you speak in English? English, okay, but it's so, so très approximatif. Um, there is no interest at all to uh, to sing photography for the, the use. It's, the photography, the professional or the amateur have the same the same project, the same camera, the same subject. The subject always depends, and um, they have different strategies for diffusion. If we keep this idea, it's the same, the same practice with several intentions, you found a real interesting museum and very different with the other museum of our photography. It's the same practice between a professional or an amateur because camera, it's the first, photographic camera is the first in the history of humanity is the first, the, 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 the first moment where the, um, the techniques and uh, the, um, create the situation. And if, we, if the reduction of fine art, for, for photography for fine arts, forgets this real main thing, the camera surdeterminates the operation. If, 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 you, if you forget that, you always run after fine arts. 
the idea is not to consider um, uh, art photography like um, less interesting than the other things. But if you, if you forget, it's the first, the first moment, just before car, just before plane, that's uh, the, first, the first time in the history of humanity where we, you, you, you have the machine do all. I think that's a rather reductive way to, uh, to identify and to analyze photography. Yes, it's an automated process, but uh, then I hope, I hope there are some choices and some human choices that, uh, that uh, are part of that process, framing, uh, cropping, uh, uh, exposure lens, etc., etc. I'm not repeating them all, and I don't want to play my John Sarkovsky. Uh, <laughs> but... Uh, you but <laughs> But, uh, well, it's, no, no, it, I, 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 I I'm absolutely, I'm agree, absolutely I'm agree, but that it's an automated process, no. but uh, I hope, and I hope, that uh, there's a human factor entering in that process that we should not forget. C'est évident, it's, it's an evidence. But if you, if, if you put what I said in the center of the reflection, all what you said, what you complement after, allows to create several different discourse. The difference between the amateur and the professional, the, the different ways between the 19th and the 20th century, the relation between uh, the, the relationship between the industry. Have, uh, you know, I, I really agree. But if we accept the idea in the center of photographic museum, you have a mechanic uh, concept project. It's the first time the humanity accept to forgive to the machine one of the results. But after, evidently, you have a choice, several choice, several intentions, and send several projects. So I don't want to respond to what the basis of photography is, but maybe what the basis of a photography museum can be. In answer to your question, um, whether you can have a successful museum without the, the, the property, I think the answer is yes, there are the sort of non-collecting institutions, the Kunsthallen that organize exhibitions. But I think most of us here who work with a collection, and this came up a little earlier, have a bit of an, an obsession or a love of the physical objects. And as curators, whether it is the physical objects, the vintage photographs or the archive, um, the negatives, the, the digital files that we are um, charged with keeping, taking care of, I think we all do that with a certain um, sense of responsibility to the future. And perhaps it's not just that each of us plays the role in our respective institutions of interpreting that material, but keeping it so that others can come and use it to, for their various projects. I think that's especially um, useful for an institution like ours, which has a study room that encourages people to come use the photographs, or like the Getty Research Institute, which many of you or several of you have commented upon as a really wonderful um, resource for doing the kind of research on projects that you are interested in, uh, interpreting from whichever point of view it is that you, you are approaching the material. But, uh, on this question of uh, collection and property, uh, I, I think you gave Virginia a very good example, even for an institution that we, we know is a good and wealthy institution that you decided to buy the, the Mapplethorpe estate on a kind of a John Venture. Uh, with the LACMA and the, the Getty Research and the, and the Foundation. Uh, it's, it's showing that there, there are alternative models and that uh, a museum and a museum's collection is not uh, a private collection or a private uh, a collector. And we can perhaps go back to the basics of, the, of, of a collection, what it is to be uh, a collection or to have a collection today, uh, especially in this world where we are sharing exhibitions, that they are traveling exhibitions, that you mentioned that, Martin, we don't uh, uh, exhibit the permanent collection on a permanent basis. Uh, so 
I, I, I think there are two main basics of the, of the collection. One is preservation. And uh, if we were buying 19th century yesterday, what, are became, what have become uh, master of photography? Uh, at that time, it was really a question of preservation. If you didn't get the archive of uh, a famous French or English photographer, it was going to the, to the garbage sometime, or uh, to, be, to be just, uh, if you were not buying the complete album, uh, the album was uh, just uh, cut and, uh, and uh, sold played by, by play. So this question of, of preservation nowadays has totally changed. There are still some parts of photography to, to preserve, but they are perhaps not the same part. And there is the, the, the second aspect of it, which is much more contemporary as an approach, is to give uh, support to the artist and uh, to help them to, uh, to produce their new, their new series. So uh, through, through acquisition, uh, you can uh, help them, artists, to do their, uh, their work and to survive as artists and not being something else as they are most of the, of the time. So I'm sure that from American or, or European perspective, there are some other uh, strategies in terms of the, of the collection, but we can perhaps start on these two points and see we, if we agree or, or disagree. Can I, can I ask further in this, in this respect? I mean, it's not expressly uh, to, to you, just a general, a general question. Um, um, uh, concerning exactly th those two points, could you in this, in this context imagine to circulate uh, collections in the sense that uh, you, give, you give part of it to somebody else who would be interested in working on that while you take on another job, not to be bogged down by the work of totally finishing everything in this one, in this one part, yes? Uh, what I mean that, that collections also um, uh, uh, tend to be this kind of thing that you get it and then you have it for 25 years, yes? And then maybe in 10 years there will be somebody else w will come up and say, look, I can do this and you, you can focus on something else uh, because you, have, you, might, you might have a, another project to work on. Is that, is, that, is that something that is entirely unimaginable to you or is that something that, 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 that might be of interest, yes? Like s putting, putting something you have back in circulation to other institutions, of course, not to private people, yes? For the sake of taking on new, uh, new endeavors. I think that's really a question of financing. Who's, who's gonna finance that? Is that another institution that will finance that? Um, I mean, when you have an, exhibition, or an institution with a curatorial staff of seven people who are working on the collection, you never really finish. Um, you move from one project on to the next, but as I said, our collection is available for others for research on loan, and I think all of the, insti well, you know, pretty much all of the institutions here are more than happy to share their collection, but then there are fees associated with that uh, to borrow the works. Um, I, I don't know, does anybody see a, a, an, an easier solution for circulating a collection? Matthew, who is absent, he, he somehow uh, touched the, the, the topic because if I understood well, after he examined the whole collection very carefully, he found some parts which were not of interest for the Art Institute of Chicago and he just gave, decided to give it to some institutions who were, for example, concentrated or a special topic or other, what meant that they would do the good work around this particular part of the collection uh, and the museum is, uh, just didn't have enough space. I mean, they had f f very. I mean, they didn't have space to, to, to store to, to, for to store storage, the the collection. So I think that this this was the question about this acquisition, because it's something that. Um, I think that particularly, particularly uh, the photography department or a photography museum with a history uh, would probably have to face uh, because uh, with photography we immediately come to hundreds of thousands of pieces and um, if, if we have them too much um, like uh, if you have 150 archives of photographers uh, you, as an institution, I can imagine that you just 
uh, cannot really uh, make them visible because it's it's too much. Uh, so I think that, that this was the question. Don't you think, for for example, about sharing this with I don't know, like different foundations which would do projects around particular archives? Um, we, uh, as a national museum, we tried this. We uh, had. Uh, I think seven museums and another conference with archives, uh, another five or six. And we had conference roundtable discussions about what we would like to um, share. And uh, this, I, I, we're still trying to do it, but I think it doesn't work at all. Because, um, of course, everybody wants to lose their, the stuff they don't like. But if there's something interesting on the market, we, are, we don't talk over, we, we are all behind the doors and uh, trying to steal it away from each other. So um, it's quite difficult. And um, also um, de, de accessing is that the word? Is, uh, is a hell of a job. Um, because in Holland we have, kind of, we have a system for that, a very uh, democratic system. But the first rule is you have to describe what you want to give away to, a, to another museum. And if you have uh, 100,000 uh, negatives, start describing. They're not described in our database. So um, only the description of what you want to give away is so much work you, cannot, you can better stop. We just leave it somewhere and we don't do too much with it. And hope maybe it will fall apart from itself. That happens sometimes. Or someone might come and might um, find out that it's far more interesting stuff in there than we've ever expected. So sometimes we cannot do, uh, we cannot work with the whole collection. So uh, there's stuff there we don't know much about. It's a pity, but I, I would need probably 200 scholars to work the whole collection. So um, that's for that we are we are not a museum. We are an archive. So you accept that you, you'll never be able to complete everything. We'll just wait and, and uh, yeah, we, with the, yeah, we win it for hundreds of years and then we can digitize and maybe... And how big are your reserves? When will you be overflowing? I mean, in the sense that, you know, you have material coming in. Oh, we know. We're, we're, so far you we're getting more critical and we are sometimes um, uh, trying to decide not to get a complete archive in and to um, separate at the door. And also that is complicated. But sometimes with the help of photographers themselves, you can discuss with them um, if you shoot a photographer who did beautiful architecture photography, but for, for his maintenance, he also did portraits. They are sometimes open to, to uh, decide to not get all the portraits in, but only a part of it. Yes, I, w I would like to answer about the question of the collection. Um, there is not just a problem about what kind of photography you collect, if it's just art photography or any kind of photography. Um, I think we all work in different structure, and some of us, we have archives, and some, like Quentin, they just have collection, and they don't have any archive. And so, and at the San Pompidou, we have some archives, and it's a very big problem because we don't have staff to work on, and it's not free access. Uh, uh, we don't, I, I just say in my presentation, we don't do modern print uh, from the negative, so we never present uh, this, this archive. And I think it's, it's my own uh, uh, point of view, but I think perhaps this archive will be in a better way if they were in an ICAF center uh, and not in our uh, museum. And uh, if we could uh, have them just for exhibition, or I don't know. But some, sometimes it's not the best way to have everything and we cannot show it. We don't have a space for, to, to show all this archive. In the museum, we just have some rooms in the in the collection uh, spaces, but uh, and that's all. We don't have specific uh, photographic exhibition spaces. So we have all these things, and we don't do anything with this. With this, so you have to to know if uh, a structure is better 
uh, if you want to build a structure because you need to have an archive center or just uh, a collection and to exhibit this collection and to present what you have, it's, de it's depend of uh, how, how you think of it. It's not... I would like perhaps to uh, ask uh, Danuta Itzkiewicz, how you, uh, having the collection which comes from t two very different sources, the iconography and the graphic arts, uh, how, how you think they, they will mediate uh, between each other? Do you think, for example, to do, 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 you, do you plan to remove photographs from the graphic um, arts department or to leave them there? And what would be, what would be a, a, the, or what is the idea to develop the collection? In which direction? Uh, it will be a very difficult situation, uh, but uh, for the first, I would like to say that I'm very fascinating that we are here because of this uh, important decision of the National Museum in Warsaw that we would like to have Museum of Photography. I think that it's a very uh, important moment uh, in the whole history of, of uh, the institution and uh, that we try to uh, work from today uh, on this idea. Uh, I think that uh, the museum uh, ought to be dedicated to photography, to pure photography, to the idea of photography. Uh, and uh, I think that we don't know to have um, museum of art, photography, or so on. But uh, we would like to think about the medium uh, widely uh, and uh, the decision how to, um, how to think about uh, our main uh, source uh, in this uh, Museum of Photography uh, will be very important for us and difficult, I think, perhaps more difficult that redefinition of your uh, existing Museum of uh, Photography. But uh, I think that the audience uh, which we have in our museum uh, loves photography and uh, want to see uh, a lot of uh, kinds of uh, photographic um, uh, objects uh, like social photography, photo reportage, uh, not only art photography. Uh, so it's it's uh, the main idea of of us. I think it's is this uh, philosophy of photography which will be the hero of, uh, of our museum. Uh, and uh, about collection, iconography, photography, and manuscripts uh, we have uh, in our department. Uh, it's interesting work, but uh, very difficult. And um, I don't know now uh, how we can... Uh, uh, take out uh, photographs uh, from all the iconographical collection because uh, uh, this iconographical collection uh, it's photography some uh, drawings uh, but uh, especially photographs so we will think about it uh, it's the problem Well, I will get back to this property issue, which is, I think, very important also to Poland. As you know, we have a communist past also, so there is not that many uh, private collections, and um, but there are some, and there are some private collectors, very eminent one, ones in this room. So uh, I believe in this property, I must say, and the possession of photography in a very physical like uh, way. That this is something that is uh, uh, that is crucial for the establishment of any institution, especially knowing how many problems there are with, uh, uh, with legal um, uh, rights 
what is possessed by public institutions in this country, even national museum. Uh, in Wrocław or in Łódź or even uh, we have these problems at the foundation, like talking to the ancestors of photographers. This is a crucial issue. What, what do we have, yes? Uh, and uh, I, thought, I thought about it when uh, Piotr mentioned uh, uh, Górski, because of course uh, I wonder whether you have some money to spend it on um, uh, Andras Górski's show or... Uh, but some private collectors in this country do have it, yes? so of course they can, they can uh, support this initiative and you will, you will give your uh, precious 19th century treasures and uh, uh, for example Grażyna Kulczyk may donate you or give you or um, uh, you know, present her uh, Górskis uh, one after another. Yeah? Uh, um, so it's, uh, uh, it's a key uh, thing. However, I, I, I totally agree with you and this new museology talk, yes, because when you talk about Louis Lawler, then uh, I mentioned Douglas Crimp and we are all on the museum's ruins in this sense and this museum cannot be, and I mentioned this w once again, a classical museum. It's no way, no chance. Uh, uh, even with, uh, if, if, if the Gurski is this uh, mark of the, of the 21st century uh, progress, but it still doesn't um, sound too convincing to me uh, uh, with this outline for, the, for this future institution that is established but non-existent, and we'll see what will happen with this, um, um, with this particular uh, museum uh, of photography in, uh, in Warsaw. Anybody else would like to say something? Well, I, I think it's obvious that uh, there is a plurality of, of curatorial approaches, institutional histories, and so on. And, and this is very good. I think um, there is, of course, on the other hand, this pressure of canon. And canon, of course, is created by institutions mostly. And, and so, so we are between the two kind of opposite poles. And, and I think uh, uh, it, 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 it's important to, uh, to have some kind of canon, but on the other hand, it's also important to question that canon. Uh, so this can actually uh, valorize this plurality. And what is then, of course, important, that there is some kind of exchange, discussion, dialogue that, that uh, institutions sometimes tend to as it was already suggested, ossify, they have their own life, and then they uh, kind of are not so much uh, communicating uh, sometimes, or they, they communicate less than they, they should be. Uh, so so I, I think it's great that, that we had this opportunity uh, to voice our different views, experiences, and and I would like to emphasize that what sometimes uh, is presented as a problem, for example, art and documentary photography, uh, this is also something positive, something uh, actually productive. These tensions and conflicts are something which can inspire us to uh, actually develop new curatorial uh, practices, new readings of, of these tensions. So, I think we... It's a very this, nice this is, this is start to close the discussion. Close discussion. <laughs> so, thank you to all of you. I would like to thank again the National Museum to open publicly this discussion. I think it's a really great, great thing. And thank you to all of you for having uh, come to, came to Warsaw. And I hope that will, there will be some... Uh, new uh, friendships and uh, perhaps projects that will come out of it intellectually or as exhibitions or publications. So really thank you to all of you. Uh, and I also would like to thank, I think that all of us would like to thank Anja Micińska who really, without her it wouldn't be possible because she made all the hard work. <laughs> I really would like to underline it because um, she put out of my shoulders most of the work. So thank you, Anya. And thank you for sharing your thoughts with us. And, and
to the name perhaps of all the panelists, we would like to thank you also for your welcoming and your great organization. It was really two fantastic days, so we really thank you for two in public. Okay. Uh, and two uh, Uh, thank you very much for coming. Uh, I'd like to still offer the rooms of the museum for those who would like to see something. I'll be giving a short tour in five, ten minutes of the 20th century, so if you're not too tired and not too hungry, I don't know what was about the food today, then uh, I'll be waiting for you downstairs here and uh, we'll go up, all right? Thank you very much. <laughs>